you, you're smart, you're talented, and you're successful. So it's just a matter of time before a nonprofit board that you really like asks you to give them a hand. And this could be the beginning of a beautiful relationship or the start of the relationship from hell. Listen carefully. They're going to say to you, we know you're good at fundraising, and that means they have termites in the clubhouse. They're going to tell you you've got people skills, which means their board chair is at odds with their executive director. Be careful. I'm going to talk tonight about some of the things that you should be looking out for when the nonprofit boards come around and are looking to work with you and all of your talents. First of all, what do boards actually do? Governance, delegation, fundraising, and oh my god, is this sexy or what? So it, it's not quite what you thought. Um, they want to know what you bring, and this is what they're looking for. They never ask people who have these skills, they just ask their friends. So do yourself a favor, unless you have a couple of those skills, put it off until later. Otherwise, everyone will be unhappy. And did I mention? A hundred hours a year minimum is what the consultants estimate that you will be spending if you work with a board, and they always have their retreat on your spouse's birthday. <laughs> is this the board for you? What I'm going to do tonight is help you figure out if these are the people you want to spend a hundred hours a year with. We're going to look at some of the key things that you need to ask. What are their goals? What are their problems? The problems are important because their problems are going to be your problems. You also want to get a copy of that plan and read it. The other things you want to do is don't just ask the board. Ask all these other folks, particularly the ex-board members. Boy, do they tell you some great stories. When you get, I'm going to go over a few of the specific questions that you want to ask and some really scary things to be alert for. First of all, what direction are they going? What speed are they going? Do they have a lot of competitors? Are they breaking into uncharted territory? And is that the sort of thing that you want to do? How do they handle those problems? Everyone has problems. But some boards are confrontational. Some of them sweep it all under the carpet. Make sure that whatever their problem-solving style is, that it's something that really works for you. Hostage situations. Boards often have a founder, a major donor, or a board member who is a bully. Do not join one of those boards unless you want to become a hostage negotiator. This is related to it. For, the, for reasons that begin in kindness and convenience, boards have a tendency to hire in staff positions and contractor positions their friends and their families. This is an ethical problem that you do not want to take on. Read the Washington Nonprofit Handbook. It's a free download from the Secretary of State. It'll tell you all about the best practices and what happens to boards that don't follow them. Now we're going to look at another book. Those are the board bylaws. Most boards have not read their own bylaws, and most boards are out of step with them. Ask for a copy of the bylaws and read it. You'll be glad that you did. Do they have financial problems? And they may be well run. They may be adhering to all the best pro uh, practices. But if there are external forces, they've lost a major grant, um, taxes have gone up on their building, they're going to be in trouble and you need to know about it. Finally, are their expectations of you realistic? If you work for Microsoft, they think you're going to solve all their financial problems. I, I am not kidding. Um, <laughs> They may think you have endless amounts of time to spend fixing their website. Make sure that you're all in sync. And make sure that you know what your own goals are. Uh, can you provide expertise? Can you raise money? Can you build community relationships? You should also have some goals for yourself as an individual, because being on a board is going to change you. You're going to develop some wonderful skills. These may change what you do in your career, and they may even change what you do with your life. Um, I hope that you go into this with an open heart. I hope you also go into it with your eyes open. I want it to be a great experience for you and also for the board that's lucky enough to have your skills and talent. Thank you.